Hey traders, in today's video, I'm going to show you guys an example of how to code a trailing stop in PineScript for the TradingView platform. None of the material in this video is financial advice. I'm experienced in managing my own finances, but I'm not qualified to give anyone advice on what to buy or sell. Everything I do in these videos is purely to demonstrate coding techniques and the code I write is purely for example purposes. You should always do your own research and due diligence before engaging in trading or investing and please seek professional guidance if you need it. With that said, let's look at some code. So a trailing stop is typically used to lock in profits on trend following systems and systems that look to ride momentum in markets. It's a very common exit method in many strategies out there. And today I'm going to show you a simple template for creating an ATR based trailing stop. So the ATR or average true range is a method for analyzing price action volatility. The higher the ATR value, the larger the candles or movements in price action over that time period. And so the advantage of an ATR based trailing stop is that it will adapt to volatility. So as the market increases in volatility, your stop loss will typically widen. So to start with, I'm just going to create a blank strategy script in the Pine editor. This is purely an example script from the TradingView platform. Um, it's not a particularly good system, definitely don't trade it, but it gives us a good template to work with in terms of entry, uh, in terms of entering trades so that we can play around with some code. So before we start, I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. There we go. We have the sample script from TradingView's sample library added. So the first thing I'm going to need here is some user inputs. So let's copy over some code. So I'm going to get a bar look back, an ATR length and an ATR multiplier. And I'll, I'll explain what all of these do uh, as we get on with the script. The first thing I need is the ATR value. So let's copy this code over here. This line of code is getting the ATR value from the inbuilt ATR or technical analysis library. And that gives us this red line here, this value. That is what I'm going to use to trail my stop loss based on volatility. So the next thing I need to do before we move on is calculate a long trailing stop. So this is a long trade. I need to get an initial trailing stop value for that long trade. And then same for short trades. I need to get an initial uh, trailing stop short. And then what we can do is compare that value to the currently saved stop loss and ratchet that down in the case of a short trade or ratchet it up in the case of a long trade. So I'll copy over some more code here. So here we are calculating our stop loss values. Trailing stop loss has this VAR keyword in front of it, and that makes it persistent across all the bars on my chart. So this essentially saves my trailing stop value. Now it will be initialized as NA or not a number. It's not a value, it's null. And then we have two float values here. So let's look at the long stop value to start with. What this line of code is doing is first we're getting the highest low over our look back period. So that'll be 10 bars by default. So we're counting back 10 bars and getting the highest low over that period. So in this case, that would be this value here. And then we are subtracting the ATR value, which is our red number, multiplied by our ATR multiplier input. So if I save my code here, this should compile without any problems. There we go. We're not doing anything yet. I'm not actually using this, uh, this trailing stop, but if I come up to the settings here, if I set this to two, now I will be trailing my stop loss two times this value from the highest low over our look back period. And obviously for short trades, it's going to be the opposite. We're trailing from the highest high over my look back period. So now one of the best practices for me in my own coding process is to have a Boolean value here that checks if I can take trades. And what this is going to do is validate any indicator values. So because we're getting a 14 period ATR value, if I go to the very first bar on my chart, I need at least 14 bars to print before this value will give me a number. If we hover over these early bars, there is no number there. So if I take a trade in these early bars, then I will not have a stop loss because if I do any mathematical calculation with any of these values that are NA, then the value itself will be set to NA. So multiplying an NA value by our multiplier, so two times NA equals NA. And if you open a trade or pass in a stop loss value 
into the strategy uh, functions, that means you don't have a stop loss, which is obviously not good. And so to avoid issues on certain markets where the script takes a trade very early on, I like to check my indicator values using this little Boolean value here. Now, depending on the script I'm working with, I might have a lot of indicator values to check. In this case, we only really need to check the ATR value. So here I'm checking, is our long stop and our short stop not NA? I could simplify this by just checking the ATR value itself in this particular script. So I'll leave it as that to keep things simple. And I've also got this background color function here, which will highlight the chart when this condition is true. So if we do not have a valid ATR value, if I save my script here, the chart will turn red. So this period of time here, we should not be taking any trades because uh, we don't have the indicator values required in order to manage the position. All right, so now we can get onto the actual trailing stop code. The first thing I'm going to do is change this um, template code here for, for entering trades and just add on our can take trades check. So in this particular example script, we're just looking for a moving average crossover. But if I add in can take trades and moving average crossover, now the script will not take any trades unless our indicator values are valid. So that solves one potential problem. Um, it's a bit of an edge case, but it can happen. It's happened to me in the past and I couldn't figure out why my script wasn't taking any trades. And then I realized it's because it wouldn't close a trade that it took very early on in price action. But anyway, let's move on. So here we're entering long trades and here I am entering short trades. Now this particular script, the way it works is it shorts and then it closes that short the next time it gets a buy. And then the next time it gets say another signal, it opens a new short trade and then it closes that short trade. And that's how this system works. Because I'm going to adapt it to use a trailing stop, I don't want it to do that anymore. So I'm going to add another check here and strategy dot position size equals zero. If I copy this and paste it in the short condition as well, I could also add this on to the end of this line here, but then this line of code is getting quite long. So I'll leave it inside this if statement. And what this is doing is now checking, um, do we have a moving average crossover and my indicator values are valid and my position is flat. So I'm not long, I'm not short. I don't have any open trades. If that condition is met, then I will open a long trade or a short trade. I'm also going to change my trade IDs to make these easier to reference later. So this is our long trade, this is our short trade. If I save the code now, the script will open a trade and never close it because I haven't put in my trailing stop code yet. That is what I'm going to do next. Now, there are many ways I could go about this, but for this particular video, I'm going to demonstrate the most efficient way to do this with the fewest lines of code possible while still keeping the code readable and not being too convoluted. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check. The first thing I'm going to check is, is my position size greater than zero? That means I have an open long trade. So now I'm updating the long trailing stop. So now I need to check, is my trailing stop loss value, this value up here, NA? If it is NA, then we have not taken any trades and we need to set an initial value for this stop loss value. So if my initial trailing stop loss value is not set or my temporary long stop value up here that is constantly calculating the long stop value, if that is greater than our saved trailing stop value, then I want to override my saved stop trailing value with the new long stop. And what I'll do is I'll plot these two lines onto the chart so that you can see what this is doing visually. So let's start by just plotting my long stop, save my code. You can see this blue line is constantly moving. Now for a trailing stop, I don't want it to do this. I want it to only move up. I don't want it to ever move down. So every time it moves up, it should stay there. So this should stay up here if I'm involved in a long trade. So if I comment out my short conditions here and I plot my trailing stop loss, I will title this stop loss and I will give it a color of red, a line width of one and a style of plot dot plot style. I'll just write style. I'm looking for line break, line BR. 
So this will break the line. So I'll show you what I mean. If I save my code now, we will no longer take short trades. So I'll just look for the first long trade. There it is. You can see my blue line here is constantly moving one ATR from the lowest low. But as soon as this script enters a trade, the red line is tracking that blue line. But as soon as the blue line starts to move down, the red line stays where it is. And that's my trailing stop. And it should exit my trade up here. But I haven't added my exit code yet. But now hopefully you can see visually what this code is doing. So now I'm going to uncomment my short code and we'll add in an else if statement here. So now what I'm going to say is, if I'm in a long trade, do this. Otherwise, if I'm in a short trade, so my position size is negative and not zero, that means I am short. If that's the case, then I can copy this code here to update my short stop. And now I just need to flip these operators around. Um, so is my saved trailing stop, my red line, NA, not set, or is my short stop lower than my saved stop, my trailing stop loss? If that is the case, then we update the trailing stop loss to short stop. This is why we need to set trailing stop loss to VAR to make it persistent. Otherwise, it's going to jump around the same as these values here. Uh, this is my long stop, which is constantly updating on every bar. I do not want that to happen with my trailing stop. I only want my trailing stop to change if it is moving higher in the case of a long trade. So that's it. The final thing I'm going to do is one last else. If this else is true, then that means I'm not in a long trade and I'm not in a short trade. So I'm not in any trade. And in that case, I want to reset my trailing stop loss to NA. Now I'll leave these plots here for now so that we can see what's going on. But the final thing I need to do is exit my trades with the trailing stop. So I'll just copy this code over to save time and explain what's happening. So I'm using the strategy.exit function to exit my long trade. Um, so the format of this is, this is the name of my exit, which will display on the chart. It's like a comment. And in the strategy tester list of trades, this second value is the trade I want to close. So here I'm closing the long, any open long trade. Here I'm closing any open short trade. And I'm passing in a stop loss value, which is a price parameter. And this price parameter is my trailing stop loss, this red line. So now when I save my code, the script will exit my long trade right there. There we go. So if I zoom in a bit, um, you can see that our stop loss was hit on this bar here and our stop loss stops drawing. We have a line break. That is why I made uh, this plot a line break. If I get rid of the break and save my code, this line will now join, um, which is just an aesthetic thing. It just looks weird to me. I don't like that because you have this line jumping all over the chart, especially in cases like this, where we don't take a trade for a while. By adding line break, we get rid of that janky drawing. And now the line stops drawing as soon as it's set to NA. So now I can get rid of my long stop plot. I'll comment this as draw stop loss, save my code. And we are done with this particular example script. So now let's just make sure it's doing what I think it should be doing. We're entering short, trailing stop loss kicks in. And then we do not exit the trade until that stop loss is hit. So perfect example of an ATR based trailing stop. There are obviously a lot of different ways you can do this. You could trail the stop loss from a, a closing price. You could uh, trail the stop loss on a percentage basis for the uh, stock market. Or I could flip this to be the lowest low and the highest high over our look back period, which probably makes more sense for um, most trading systems. Now we're trailing one ATR above the highest high and locking in profits as it moves down. This is a bit more forgiving than the lowest high, it gives some more breathing room for the trade. So better for trend following systems, um, but for momentum systems, I find that having a tighter stop loss to capture short term momentum works a lot better for me in my systems. But yeah, you get the idea. There are all different kinds of trailing stops. We could, instead of having a limit order, we could wait until price closes above the stop loss, that's pretty easy to code. All I would need to do is comment out my limit order code. And then I could just check if 
strategy dot position size is greater than zero. That means I'm long and then I can say and the close is greater than trailing stop loss. Then I want to strategy dot close and then I need to pass in my ID. If I copy that code and uh, paste that down here and flip this operator, flip this operator, change this to short. Now we will only exit short trades if we close above or below the uh, stop loss. And that didn't work because I've got these operators around the wrong way. Excuse me, save that. There we go, that's better. So now you can see the script is waiting for a bar to close above the stop loss and then exiting on the next bars open. So those are a few different methods for trailing stops. I'll comment this out and uh, uncomment this for now. And I'll leave this code in here as an example. The source code to this script will be below the video in the pinned comment as always. If you'd like to learn more about PineScript, check out our website. I have a completely free six hour PineScript basics course there, which explains the core fundamentals of Pine. And if you want to take your coding skills to the next level, check out my mastery course. We have over 50 hours of content and 50 plus five star reviews and growing. The PineScript mastery course also comes with support where I can help answer any questions you have about PineScript coding. And of course, there's tons of free content on my YouTube channel. So if you're new to PineScript, go and check that out too. I hope you found this video interesting. Best of luck with your trading. Take care and I'll speak with you in the next video. Goodbye.